Hello physics students. In this video, I want to go over some basics about charge and how we can know if an object is charged or not and how that charge transfers to other objects. So a little bit of background. Um, we know that neutral objects are going to have a balance of charges. So what that means is that there is an equal number of maybe positive and negative in that object or on the surface of it, creating a neutral object. Charged objects, on the other hand, have an unbalance. So therefore, there might not be an equal number of positive and negative charges. Now, here's the thing. In order to create that imbalance, only electrons, that's it, not, pro not protons, not positive charges, only electrons can move in and between objects to make that charge. So you might be asking yourself, well, how does that happen? Well. If we have a negative charge, that makes a lot of sense because all I need is more electrons and that will make the imbalance and the object will then gain electrons to become more negative. To be positive, the opposite is true. Now remember, positive charges are protons and they're locked in place inside that nucleus. They cannot move. The charge carriers are only electrons. Therefore, to make a positive charge, we have to have fewer electrons. Therefore, the object will lose electrons to become positive. Big, big note. To become positive, objects lose electrons. They never, ever, ever, I'm not even going to say it, they don't do this. Okay, so please remember to become positive, the object will have to lose electrons. All right, very good. Now, the other thing that we're going to touch on, and I'm going to go over some basics, is this idea of charge. Charge has a unit. It's named after a scientist. It's called the Coulomb. It's abbreviated by a capital C. And one Coulomb is equal to 6.25 times 10 to the 18th electrons. So we're talking of the charge of an electron itself must be very, 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 very small, and it is. The charge of one electron is negative, right, because the electrons are negative, 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. Now, we're going to use these relationships later, but that's not the focus of this video. I just wanted to get some groundwork out there. What I want to focus on this video is how charge is transferred, okay? So if we have interactions between objects that have a charge, so they have an imbalance of positive and negative, all right? Maybe they've gained electrons and they're more negative. Maybe they've lost electrons and they're more positive. However that ends up, charge wants to seek a balance between two objects if they are different. And so objects can transfer their charge, right? That can happen through direct contact where objects transfer electrons when touching. It could be through grounding. It could be through actual physical touching or induction. And this is the thing I want to focus on a little bit in this video. An object can become charged when it interacts with electrons in another object over a distance even though it's not touching. So what does that mean? Well, let's say I have a balloon, and that balloon has a negative charge. Therefore, there's more negatives than positives, so overall it's negative, and it's going to approach a neutral wall. What makes this neutral is we have a balance between positives and negatives. So they all kind of equal out and cancel each other so that the net effect is there's no charge of the wall. However, if I were to bring that balloon closer to the wall, right? So I'm bringing it close, it's a negative charge. We know that like charges repel. So the negative balloon will push away the negative electrons in the wall, causing them to separate, right? So they're pushed more towards one part of the wall, leaving the positives behind. See how there's a positive here, here, and here? So that creates an induced charge. Now, I haven't touched the wall with the balloon, so there's no transfer of electrons. Nothing's trying to balance itself out, but what happens is there's positive remaining behind and negative that's repelled away. So this side of the wall becomes more positive. This side of the wall becomes more negative. We call that an induced electric charge.
Okay, now how does this play out? Well, you're going to come across some examples, and you have to remember that different materials transfer charges either easier or harder. A conductor will transfer those electrons and move those electrons very easily through it. An insulator, it makes it more difficult for those electrons to move through the material. Okay, so if we take a look at a couple examples, um, and this is similar to the interactive that, you, that you'll be doing through physics classroom, uh, we can help with our knowledge of conductors and insulators and these ideas of conduction, we can make some predictions about what charge objects will have after a certain scenario. Okay, so here's a simple one, right? We have a balloon over here and we have a conducting can, so something made of metal, on an insulating stand, okay? So that means that the charges will not travel to the ground unless there's a pathway for them to do so. So they'll stay on the can as long as there is um, no other contact, okay? If we bring a balloon that is has a negative charge and we touch that neutral insulated can, okay? If we touch it, remember charges want to balance each other out. So some of these charges that are on the balloon will be conducted to the can and we have a more of a balancing situation. So I'm gonna lose some here and I'm going to gain some on the can. So that means that the can, and when I take that balloon away, when I move it over, off of the off of touching the can, that means some of those charges have stayed behind, and so I actually have a negative balloon or and still a negative can um, when I take a look at the total charge on that situation. So, right, so this can will also be negative after we um, transfer those electrons through direct contact. All right, now what does that look like if we're not touching it? right? So let's say we had come close. Well, if I have two cans here that are right next to each other, they're neutral, right? Before the balloon is close, they're still neutral. When the balloon comes next to those two cans, so let's say that negative balloon gets close, remember it's going to repel the electrons. So a lot of those electrons that were there are going to rush over to this side. They're not going to be as present in this side. And so what it does is it separates that charge. Now, as long as the balloon is there, there's more negatives on this side and more positives on the other side. So we have a separation of charge. It's an induced charge. And as long as the balloon is present, it will stay this way. Now, it'll stay this way even if I was to separate one of these cans while the balloon is close enough, this can still stays more negative and this can still stays more positive, okay? Now, I haven't touched anything, but now I've created a different charge in those cans just by inducing that charge, okay? And that's kind of the idea. Um, so if I was to pull the balloon away before I separated those, this way, they would go back to being neutral, all right? There'd be um, negatives and positives evenly spread out in the conductor again, okay? So the timing is really important, so pay attention to how they're explaining those types of things as we go along, okay? One way that you can explain this is kind of with a swarm analogy. So if you have a bunch of insects and they are, um, you know, maybe gathering around they might be flying in all directions and there's no direction to them until you turn on a light bulb. Now that light bulb is going to cause all those insects to swarm towards it. It's going to attract all of those um, and they're gonna cause, um, just like opposites would attract, it gives a it gives it, even if it's acting over a distance, they're kind of swarming towards that light bulb. The electrons are similar to that swarm of insects. So if there's an influence, like a positive or negative charge, they're either going to be attracted, like if this one is positive and negative, they're either going to be attracted or they're going to be repelled if they are the same charge. All right, so kind of keep that in mind as you're going through some of these examples to think of that swarm. Okay, so now what if I have a similar situation, except I have a um, wire. I'm going to um, connect one of these cans to the ground. 
or somebody's hand or something like that. So that's connected to the ground. So this can is connected to the ground. All right, and I'm going to bring that balloon close again. And remember what's going to happen is it's negative, so it's going to repel the other negatives. So those are going to um, transfer away from this edge, and they're going to be collecting more on the other can. Okay, but because it's grounded, those negatives can keep traveling and get keep getting pushed away. So many of them will um, that they that they will actually kind of leave as we go. And then when the balloon is moved back, those electrons already have left. So now we've created a more positive situation. So this can will be positive. And also because a lot of the electrons are left, this can also be positive. All right, so be, pay attention to the timing, pay attention to when the can and uh, balloon are close to each other. Think of that swarm analogy. And just remember that um, you are either going to attract or repel. Okay, remember like charges repel, opposite charges attract, and only the electrons are gonna be moving. Please reach out if you have some other questions. Thanks, have a great day.